These massive spiders may not be native to North America, but they've recently found a new home in the New World. This large, long-legged creature is the Joro spider. They appeared in Georgia in 2014 and have begun to move up the east coast of the United States. After enjoying life in the Peach State for a couple of years, Joro spiders were then spotted in Tennessee, North Carolina, and South Carolina. And they're continuing their move up the eastern seaboard on their way to Canada. Canada City, Canada. Probably on the hunt for some really good maple syrup, eh? Can they survive in the North American climate? How did they get so far from their native territory? And what dangers do they pose to their new habitat? Native to Japan, China, Taiwan, and Korea, the Joro spider can grow as large as 10 centimeters in length. You could comfortably, or uncomfortably, hold one in the palm of your hand. Depending on how squeamish you are, you may not want to. The larger female Joros have bright yellow and blue-green stripes on their upper body with stripes on their legs. Preferring warm and damp weather, Joro spiders are still able to adapt to the chillier environments found across North America. The Joro can withstand brief freezes that other spiders can't. A study by the University of Georgia showed that 74% of Joro spiders were able to survive freezing temperatures that only 50% of the similar golden silk spider could. They also have a 77% higher heart rate than other spiders, helping them to cope better with cold temperatures. But how did they get half a world away from their home overseas? Beats me. Well, nobody really knows. I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! However, they have the ability to travel through the air by creating parachutes from silk threads and using them to catch the wind. This skill, known as ballooning, can get them miles from their starting point, but not much further. They can use these parachutes to attach themselves to vehicles or shipping containers, and that's probably how they arrived in the United States, hitching a ride across the ocean. So Leo DiCaprio in Titanic. Though the Joro spider is technically an invasive species, the good news is that it doesn't appear to be a threat to the environment of the North American East Coast. On the contrary, they may even be helpful. What? The Juro eats insects that other spiders usually don't, like mosquitoes, yellow jackets, and highly invasive stink bugs. Nice that one. is really nice. I'm liking them better already. I'm the good looking spider new. Stink bugs are capable of wiping out entire crops of corn, tomatoes, and peaches. Not a good bug to have in Georgia. So it's possible that the Joro spider may actually be a good thing for farmers in the States. Heck yeah! Though the jury's still out on that, as they could become a problem as they continue to multiply and spread. And they can multiply really fast. In the fall, the female lays 400 to 500 eggs in a single egg sac. The eggs spend the winter there, protected from the cold, until hatching the following summer. If these spiderlings are hoping to meet their parents when they hatch, they'll likely be out of luck. The lifespan of the Joro is about a year. Plus, the female often eats its mate, so talk about a broken home. Mm. Hey, that may be where it gets its name from. In Japanese myth, the Jorogomo is a supernatural being that takes the form of a giant spider. It then transforms into a beautiful woman that tries to seduce and kill passing men. Nasty. Yummy. But you don't have to worry. Although the spider may bite you when bothered, it'll feel like no more than a little pinch due to its small fangs. And its venom is not considered to be dangerous to humans. This isn't poison. Phew. Despite its impressive size, the Joro is not the largest spider out there. Check out the Goliath bird eater in another eight-legged episode. Spreading across North America and eating lots of stink bugs. That's what Joro spiders do, and that's what makes them crazy creatures.